It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. So one person, what does um, buy and hold mean? <clears throat> so yeah, for me, buy and hold is buying a property and holding it as a rental property for the foreseeable future. Um, when I buy a property, I usually buy property and then figure out what I'm going to do with it. But <clears throat> when I'm analyzing a deal, I look at I look at a deal through the lens of can I keep this first? And then if for some reason I decide I, I can or I don't want to, then I may look at it from a different lens of maybe a flipper or a, as a whole tail deal. But uh, for me, I'm always looking, you know, if I can buy something, how can I keep it right? How, how can I make how can I make it make sense to keep? Um, <clears throat> because real estate for me is about long term wealth. I have a day job. I don't plan on leaving my day job anytime soon. So the goal is leverage the money I make in my day job, right? Turn that earned income into passive income, right? So take the earned income, buy a cash flowing asset with that money. And then at some point when I decide I don't want to work anymore, um, I'll have real estate income built up. Um, and having the day job allows you to, you know, I think what, what people don't, well, you know, a lot of people want to get out of their day job, right? Which I get, like, I totally understand everybody's day job isn't great, but while you have one, right, leverage what that day job, right, to grow and scale faster, right? Because one of the benefits to my business is I don't got to eat off of what I make in my real estate business, right? That money just gets reinvested. Any Every dollar I make goes back into the business to me buying more property. So I can scale faster. I can buy more property because I don't have to use that money to pay bills or eat. So you know, there's some benefit to you having a day job other than the fact that, you know, it's just a day job. While you have it, you know, leverage it. You can leverage that and move quicker rather than if you, if I, if I left my day job, now I got to slow down because I got to pay bills. I got to, you know, figure out how much salary to pay myself. And so I have less money to invest in my business if I, if I didn't have a day job. Definitely. I'm, I'm glad uh, I'll, I'll answer this question. I'll read the next question, but really quick something you mentioned really, well, that whole point I think was really great. Like a lot of people think it has to be either or, when in fact, it could be, you could have it all. It could be both. Like you don't have to leave your job. You don't have to leave the workforce. And, and the way you broke it down makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, it's a different ball game when you need that money, you know, making money you don't need, that's great. And you know, when you decide to leave, you'll, you'll be more than comfortable, you know? So I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Right, and it keeps it fun too, right? Like. If you gotta, if you gotta use your your investing business to eat, right? It's a different, like it's a different animal. You you know, you're out there, you know, you know, grinding, kill or be killed, right? But if it's fun, right? It's a it's a side hustle. It's a business. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to buy a deal that's gonna cost me a bunch of money, but um, it's it's less pressure on myself because I know I know I got I know I got a job that's gonna produce the income I need to live off of. Got it. Got it. All right. So the next question is a two part question. I'll, I'll ask the first part first. Uh, so said, under what types of business entities do you keep your buy and hold properties? I just created an LLC to begin wholesaling and flips, but I've been told that an LLC is not the best way to go for buy and holds. Yeah. Uh, again, disclaimer, I'm no lawyer. I'm no financial expert. So, um, I would advise you to talk to a, a real estate attorney um, before making those types of decisions. But one of the first things I did before I got started was I read a book on different entity structures. It was one of the, it was one in the Rich Dad series that one of Kiyosaki's specialists, tax specialists wrote, but it just talked about all the different LLCs and what makes sense for what kinds of real estate. So I can't remember what it's called, Sam, if you can find it and look it up or something, maybe you can uh, let them know what it was. But um, um, but what that book taught me was uh, that LLCs were just fine. Um, and so um, the, the, the idea of an LLC is asset protection, right? It's so that if you were to get sued or something were to happen and you go through a litigation that 
the asset is tied up in an entity and that entity protects you and your personal property or finances from that litigation, right? And so um, what that means is, so that's why some people put each property they own in a different LLC. Um, I don't do that. I have one LLC for, for my personal assets, for my, I'm sorry, for my real estate assets. And I have a separate LLC for real estate assets that I have in a 50-50 partnership with uh, my business partner. So I only have two LLCs. Um, and I don't do one for every property, right? And the reason I don't do one for every property is because, again, the idea is that this LLC is an entity. If you were to get sued, all they would be able to get, all the people who would be coming after you would be able to get to is the property in the LLC and not your personal home or personal finances. Um, but there are some, there are some things you have to do each year to maintain for your LLC to maintain its legitimacy, right? You have to file meeting notes and uh, meeting minutes. You have to uh, um, have a yearly, um, kind of like a yearly shareholders meeting, um, and then take notes, right? All this stuff has to uh, take place, and then your real estate attorney usually keeps that in a packet for you um, in the event someone needs it. Um, so. The more LLCs you have, the more of that documentation you have to keep and keep separate and file every year. Because if you don't, then whoever's, whatever lawyer is gonna come after you will immediately look to see if that documentation is there. And if it's not, then you don't have that protection anyway. And it was a waste of you having multiple LLCs. Um, I know myself, <laughs> I know that that's a level of organization that I I'm just wouldn't stick to. So one LLC for my properties, I can keep up with. Um, so that's why I have one out one LLC with all my properties in it. Um, now, as I accumulate more and more, I might split and get two, just because you know, uh, 60 doors is a lot. Um, but um, but that's what I would say about an LLC, I think it's a fine um, uh, structure for you to put your real estate buy and holds in. Um, I do all of my flips and and all of my buy and holds in the same LLC. Now my business partner does flips in one LLC and buy and holds in another. And he does that for tax reasons. There's some tax benefit that he gets for doing flips in a certain business and, and uh, rentals in a different one that I'm, I'm not familiar with. So I would just read up on entity structures and kind of what benefits they can provide you. But just remember that, you know, if you're gonna have multiple, you gotta make sure you have the processes in place or your lawyer has the processes in place to, to uh, keep those entity structures uh, valid. Definitely, thanks for answering that. And also, would you say that, um, would, do you think it's fine for somebody to start without having an LLC and just do what they can and, and figure it out later? Absolutely. Would you? Absolutely, man. Imperfect action is better than no action, right? Yeah. So, right, don't let the fact that you don't have an entity stop you from getting started. Now I will say on the flip side, if you're gonna have a business, run it like a business from day one, right? So there's nothing that should be stopping anybody right now from Monday morning when you wake up calling a real estate attorney and filing for an LLC. It's not very expensive. Um, they do all the work. All you need to do is tell them what you want your LLC to be called and what you plan on doing in that LLC. They take care of everything else. And then you, you, you write them a check. It's usually three to 500 bucks, right? So do it, do it because of the protection, but also it's uh, the benefits uh, on your taxes are huge, right? Because now you have a business. All a business is, is a piece of paper with a tax identification number on it filed away. That's it. That's what a business is. So once you have an LLC, you have a business. And once you have a business, you can start writing off expenses that you're already paying out of your pocket for anyway. Um, so uh, you're just going to start, you'll start saving money or, or getting more of your money back because you have a business that you're then filing expenses against. Um, so I tell anybody that if you plan on buying real estate this month or three years from now, it doesn't matter. You should start an LLC today. Your LLC doesn't have to own an asset for you to get the benefits of a business. 
for me. Um, and then it's a follow up from Jasmine. So she said, a small bank here in Chattanooga is willing to finance my first rehab for 12,000 down, but I only have 6,000. Where would you recommend to be finding the other 6K? Oh man, 6K is not that much. It, it sounds like a lot, but it's not when it, in, in terms of real estate, man, you need to be talking to everybody you know that's got money, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, tell them what you're doing, show them the numbers, show them how you think it's gonna benefit you, show them how you think you can pay them back, right? Put together a business plan and go to them and say, hey, this is my plan. I'm planning on buying this asset. I'm planning on you know, doing this work to it and then renting it out for this or selling it for that. Like put that all together in like a little PowerPoint and take it to your family and do a, do a little presentation for them. Show them you're professional. Show them you've got plans for this and you're gonna get a return on your investment um, and ask them, do they wanna be a part of it, right? Don't just go and say, hey, I need six grand. Go and say, hey, I've got an investment opportunity for you. Take a look at this, right? And then um, you might, you never know who might say, yeah, I want a piece of that or yeah, I wanna support you in that, right? Six grand is not a ton to come up with. Um, you can, um, uh, there is hard money lenders. I mean, six grand a little low for a hard money lender. They might not want to loan just six grand, but there's plenty that might, man. Um, you're going to pay um, higher interest rates on hard money. But I mean, if it gets you the deal that gets you in the game, you know, it might be worth it. So I just, I'd, I'd analyze that that hard money loan pretty heavily um, because there's a lot of fees and, and, and you're going to pay higher interest rates on a hard money lender. But you can get on bigger pockets and Google hard money lenders and a bunch of them pop up and you can start making phone calls and see uh, what they might be willing to do for you. Um, again, 401k loan, if you've got a 401k or your significant other has a 401k uh, or your mom or your dad, if they got a 401k and they want to take out the loan and you pay them back, you never know, man. Uh, just ask the question. Um, 6k, man, you can get 6k selling stuff, man. What do you, what do you got in your house? that you don't need, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, how hungry are you, right? Like, you know, you can you can get six grand selling stuff. Um, uh, so, you know, I'd look at stuff like that. Um, pick up a little side hustle for a few months, generate 6K, right? You can you can flip clothes and shoes, just going to like TJ Maxx or, or uh, Marshalls. Um, you know, you hop, go to the shoe section and hop on eBay and as you find shoes that are that are you know trendy, Google them on eBay and uh, and see what they're selling for on eBay. And if they're selling for you know a, a decent amount more than what you're able to buy them for at TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something, then scoop them up and sell them on Let Go or on eBay and pocket the profits. Right? It might take you a few months to get to six grand, but again, how hungry are you? Right? Six grand, you can get you can get six grand. It's not that hard. Take some take some hustle. Definitely. Um, and then from Nicole, if we already have a business, can we use that funding to reinvest in real estate? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, money's money. So anything you make, if you want to reinvest it into another asset, you know, that's absolutely something you should do. Like I'm no tax expert, so I don't know if you're going to have to pay I assume you still have to pay taxes on what you make from your other business, regardless of if you take the profits and invest it into real estate. So if you're looking for a way to avoid the taxes, I don't know that buying real estate is going to get you there, but you can buy real estate or you can take that money and spend it on something else that doesn't pay you back money. So, you know, at least you're going to get the benefit of getting some cash flow. So I, I mean, absolutely. I would, I would do that. Hi everyone, Sam here from Black Real Estate Dialogue. Make sure to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button and to visit us at blackrealestatedialogue.com.